Hi, how are you? I'm Walter Waswa, um, a lecturer at North Coast Medical Training College. So I want us to uh, take you through action research and an interview lecture just to be, uh, add on what we've already had discussed earlier. So what is action research? Action research can be defined as a reflective process of problem, solv uh, problem solving by individuals working with others in team to improve their professional output and to solve problems. Action research does not require expert researchers and hence appropriate for nurses and other healthcare workers where these healthcare workers will define the problems themselves. So what is the importance of action research? Action research is helpful in professional development of an individual health practitioner, action research Action research provides a change strategy for health clients. Action research improves clinical care practice. So what are the characteristics of action research? Action research entails making change and it's collaborative and it follows a certain ethical protocol. So what do you mean by making change? Making change is important in action research and is implied in its name including and involving both change and research. This often involves engagement with projects with a project for several years, such as continual improvement in learning outcome, which contributes to change over time. It is collaborative in nature, with the researchers playing the part of the active participant or actor in the research, and the power of this role can be used to promote change and create new knowledge. Ethics, ethical issues include informed consent, confidentiality, anonymity, protecting an individual from harm. So this is very important when you're conducting your research and your research should really not cause harm to an individual. You should always seek consent before beginning or doing collective data from an individual or an institution or a community. So collaborative in meaning that you will have to work with your fellow colleagues across the department or within the department. Making change means, meaning, meaning that uh, uh, as you do your research, you will have to uh, be able to, to change the ways you'll be doing things to a very effective way of, the way, uh, of doing things so that you can be able to deliver your services to the best of your ability. So what is the research process? A research process is uh, uh, how you are going to do your research and the first step is define a researcher, step two is review of literature, step three is formulating hypothesis and step four is preparing the research design, step five is data collection, step six is data analysis and step seven is interpretation and report writing. So let's look at uh, one area of the research process is problem analysis. Problem analysis actually entails breaking the problems into smaller uh, understandable sub-problems. And this will entail scope study where we will, under you will try to understand what are the knowledge, what are the attitude and what are the practices that entails a certain problem. So it serves an educational diagnosis of the community or an institution or a system. So let's look at the problem. So this is the main problem. You break it into the sub-problem one, sub-problem two. For example, giga, giga menace. How can you break, break down the, uh, the problem of giga infestation within a community? Of course, you'll have to look at what are the major uh, sub issues that concerns jigger problem maybe you'll say hygiene uh, two maybe you'll say environmental factors such as dust and then you break it even further so that you'll be able to break this bigger the, the sub problems into further small problem so hygiene for this case maybe it is because of uh, poor uh, lack of funds ignorance or uh, lack of knowledge or something like that so that is how basically you break a problem
and of course when you're talking about cup study you're talking about knowledge knowledge of course do they know whether that problem how do they do they know what causes that problem attitude do they believe that 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 problem can be eliminated do they have a positive attitude towards change or do they have a negative attitude towards change that that problem cannot be eliminated at all practices what practices are they doing to eliminate that problem what are the current practices that they know that they are able to do that they are trying to eliminate that problem so that is what entails uh, problem analysis so i will go to the objectives of research and then just try to give you some characteristics of doing uh, of research uh, research objective so one is that we all follow an acronym of SMART. So your problem, uh, your objective of your research should be specific, should be measurable, should be achievable, should be relevant, should be time bound. So when you are doing, you are creating objectives based on the problems you have identified, then you have to be able to state what you all do and use action words. Measurable, provide a way to evaluate and use metric or data targets achievable within your scope you should not do something that you cannot be able to do if you are a nurse do something that relates to your career if you're a community health practitioner then you should do something that relates to community health if you are an orthopedic and trauma practitioner then you should do something that is within your training if you are an hssm person then you should be able to do something that relates to that training that you have and that capability. Relevant, makes sense within your job function. Improves the business in some ways. So it should make sense. You should not do something that, has, that is beyond your scope or does not bring sense or does not bring value to the institution. Time bound. You should do it within a specified time. So when you create your objectives, the objective should be within a time frame. So state when you are you'll get it done. For example, within two months you should be able to do something. Be specific on date or time frame. And that is very important when you're creating your objective during when while doing your action research. So let's let's jump a little bit and talk about behavior change communication. And we have identified already some small problems, but when you're trying to grow on the problems and trying to bring the solutions to the problem, you have to do what you call behavior change communication. Most of the people have problems or health problems or health challenges that are in institutions or places that you'll be working or practices that you'll be performing. You have to involve, of course, we say action research should be collaborative in that you work with the team. And that means that you can work with your colleagues or you can work with the community. But what are the processes of uh, you doing uh, behavior change communication? When you're identifying a person with a problem or an association or a family with a problem, there's always the first stage of behavior change, pre-contemplation. During this stage, the person is unaware of the problem. They don't know that jiggers is a problem to them. They think it is normal at that stage. Stage number two is contemplation. They are aware of the problem and they decide behavior change. And this is where you come in. Jiggers is a very big problem. Give them great awareness. And this is where your communication now comes. You create awareness at this stage and tell them that there's a problem. So you have come, you have already told them there's a problem. So now they will have what you call contemplation. contemplation. Uh, preparation. Preparation is to intend to take action. Now you have passed the information. Now they will intend, this next stage will be, there will be preparation and they will be intending to take action. The second stage, uh, the other stage is action. Practices the desired behavior. 
and this is where actually uh, when you're talking about uh, collaborative working you should always have practices that they should be able to do not too expensive within their means not too complex so solutions that you come in with you should be able to be uh, workable with the people and the people should always be doing them all the time without supervision maintenance work to sustain the behavior change at this stage now that means that if a problem is jiggers prevention mechanism then you should have a way that they should be doing these things all the time around so that that problem is eliminated once and for all not only practicing during the time that you created or when you are there but when you leave that community with a problem uh, and solution to that problem they should be able to have that awareness that continuous practicing of this type of a behavior will eliminate this problem so let's talk about uh, different intervention uh, developing interventions so when you're developing some of the intervention or solutions to the problem always prioritize the most pressing problem when you go to the community or you are within an institution look at what is the most pressing problem work from what the community or institution or family know because you do not come up with your own ideas the ideas need to come also from the people and this we are collaborative working with the with the colleagues or institutions community or families should come in and then the other thing is that you clarify the misconception and beliefs so that actually these problems can be demystified if they believe jiggers is caused by witchcraft then how are you able to tell them that actually it's not caused by witchcraft but it is caused by tinea but it's caused by fleas for this case so that is actually a, a very big important uh, aspect when you're discussing and talking about uh, developing interventions and creating solutions to the problem uh, evaluation of the intervention now you've already told uh, people what to do you have discussed them agreed that this is how you're supposed to do and people have reached a stage where they are doing what you call maintenance so how do will you evaluate whether that maintenance of a, a practice or a desired behavior to prevent or eradicate a certain problem is there one is that you identify indicators that show the problem is resolved for example uh, what are indicators indicators are things that you can easily be able to account for for example if you're talking about jiggers infestation what would be the indicators that people are practicing the prevention for example hygiene hygiene practices what are the common hygiene practices that people will be practicing you identify one of the practices and use it as an indicator to be able to identify when you come and visit the families then you'll say this pro this practice is being done for example pouring of water in the compound spraying of the chemicals and one of the indicators is that uh, you will be able to identify is of course you can be able to look at the at the feet of the people do people still have jiggers do people wash their uh, spray their compound do people wash their do they, do they clean their compound all the time so are jiggers problem continuing are they going on so one of the indicators you can use is low jigger infestation if the jiggers infestation is there jiggers chases have lowered so that can indicate that actually they are doing what you call maintenance and this behavior change that means that they are cleaning their compound so you can't find the problem of the innovation so like you see how many homes are being swept how many homes are uh, how many jigger cases we have before we are telling these people that jiggers is a problem then come back identify how many jiggers how many people, children are infected with the jiggers if the numbers is low then you will say that the, actually your intervention has worked if the cases of jiggers infestation are high then your intervention is not working and people are not doing what you call maintenance of a behavior 
So let's talk about implementation of the strategy or of the intervention. But like I said before, always involve the community we are when coming up with a solution to the problem. How to collect community or family data? Book an appointment. All the time when we have given you tasks to do, let's say, a questionnaire, you are collecting certain data from the community or family, please book an appointment with the authority, for example, the head of the family, the chief, if you are going to the community, if you are going to the community as well. Introduce yourself and state your object to the authority. So if in that questionnaire you want to collect data from the people and you want to interview people, you have to introduce yourself and set your objectives. And your objective should be smart. And then you collect data and thank the family or the community for their cooperation or the institution for that case for their cooperation. How to handle data? You handle data by getting the mean, getting the mode, and getting the range. That's how you can be able to handle big data or whichever data you have so this marks the end of my intermediate discussion with you and i wish you well this lecture will be available on your whatsapp group you can click on the link for more reading and to be able to appreciate how you can be able to do some of those work and and be able to understand the whole task of action research okay so let's see how are you supposed to do how are you going to do create your bag of using excel so if you have excel you have opened your excel like the way i've opened um this is my excel so if this is my excel let's look at my data so my data for example um uh names of the client uh, name of my people of clients so let's say this is a b c okay whichever number i'm giving you them So I'm giving them a random number. So then uh, these are the figure. Let's say this is their weight in kilogram. So you can have 20, 30, 56, uh, 22. Uh, that's too much. Nobody weighs that. Let me say, even me, I'm not having that too much kilogram. Let me 100, 35, uh, 56. So how do you create a bar graph? Oh, I have no figure here, so let me add 35. So how do you create, create a, a bar graph out of this? So the first thing you do is, of course, highlighting highlighting the areas then you go and say insert then you want to insert you can insert uh, a bar graph so for this case let's put our bar graph here so that is how in simple terms you can be able to create a bar graph so this is the name of the client and this is the weight and you can see that actually that is how their weight is and that is in simple terms how you can be able to create a bar graph on the assignment that given you so i think i'm done if you have any problem i think i'll create other lectures to be able to add value on what we've already discussed so that we can be able to help each other if you have a problem please you know how to get me through my whatsapp number in mlm and i believe you'll be able to uh, we help each other to understand this concept of action research have a nice day thank you